uh, were part of the country. Absolutely. Uh, well, I like to just say that up front because I, I kind of learned that along the way. You know, when I started, when I made the decision to do a podcast mm -hmm. and I never wanted to be a talking head. I said right. that out loud and the universe right. just laughed at me. Mm -hmm. So when I did, it was that it was supposed to be a platform, a Zoom. This is supposed to be live. Mm -hmm. I'm not a host and I don't have guests this is an opportunity for me to invite some other of my experience or friends I've met. And mm -hmm. when you want to ask questions, here's your opportunity to do so. And mm -hmm. it's become a wonderful archive of people that have had extraordinary experiences and didn't know where else they could go to talk about them. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Um, after I did about three of them, somebody had asked me what I thought about them. And I said, mm, I don't listen to them. It just feeds, it seems like I'm feeding my ego. And they said, you know, there's messages in there for you too, right? And mm -hmm. that's when I started to pay more attention to them. And they were right. Yeah. Great. Right. None yeah. of this is scripted, right? None of it. Either we get in the flow and there's an exchange or we don't, but I always get in the flow and there's always an exchange. And mm -hmm. all I need is somebody with like-minded openness on the other end and here we go. Yeah. So I'm going to shut up now and I want to find out, you know, what's been going on in your area. I know where you are um, geographically, but I always like to hear about how somebody got to this level of awareness, first of all. And then how in the world did you find me? Oh, um, I found you on the, is it ethereal podcast? The ethereal edge girls. I woke yes. up at three o'clock in the morning and I often will turn a podcast on when I can't sleep and just opened up to YouTube and there you were. I mean, it just, and I've never even listened to them before. I've never, you know, even heard of that podcast before. And so I started listening and then it got kind of late and I said, well, I'll listen to the rest of it in the morning. And that's what I, that's what I did because it, it just popped up in my YouTube in the middle of the night. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but my story is I had a spiritual awakening back in 1993. Um, I was born and raised fundamentalist Christian, believe it or not. And um, I asked God to be my teacher. And then all these mystical and metaphysical things started happening in my life and I mean, there's so many I can't even, you know, it would take months to describe what happened. But anyway, long story short, my husband and I, um, God brought my husband Milt into my life so I'd know what love is. And we've been on this spiritual path of following spirit um, since then, uh, since, since probably 1994. Um, the Casa de Santa Maria came about. Uh, because, uh, spirit, when I meditate, I see the little hand that writes things out for me in my head and basically kind of guides us and, and was told to go to Medjugorje. I don't know if you've heard of Medjugorje. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not Catholic. And I ended up having to go by myself and because we couldn't find two tickets. And so I went there and on the first day I'm meditating and praying in front of the statue saying, God, why am I here? I'm not even Catholic. Why'd you bring me here? You know, because, you know, by this time I had left organized religion, was on a spiritual journey, um, you know, seeking truth, if that makes sense. Yes. And so I sat on, I was praying in front of that statue in front of St. George. I said, why, why am I here? I hear this audible female voice that says, you've invited Jesus into your heart. Now you're going to invite me. And it was just like this heart opening of understanding the divine mother and her role in our lives. And so then that started me down that whole path where eventually um, we were called um, to create the casa. And actually I got that information from Jesus where he said, I want you to create a healing casa and it's to be called Casa de Santa Maria. And I said, well, Jesus, what about you? And he says, it's for my mother. <laughs> so it's a place where she's promised her presence and her holy helpers to um, reside there. Okay. And I sent, I think I sent you a couple of pictures 
Yeah, um, yeah. No, I went through your website in a lot of detail, honey. Every time somebody uh -huh. that I think vibrates the same way I do, mm -hmm. oh, I go do my due diligence because yeah. I want to find out as much as I can about them before we connect. Right, because right. I like to find out where are the synchronicities here? This yeah. is not coincidental. Yeah. So kind of what can I learn about this before we have our exchange? Right. Mm -hmm. So when we got the message to create a healing casa, um, we lived in Sedona at the time, which is, of course, a very powerful energetic place at the time. And we were called to go there and we moved there and sold everything and you know, we followed spirit. Um, I'm also a spiritual medium and I did a lot of um, uh, readings for about 30 years, helping people with loved ones who have passed over. And that was part of my work for the longest time. And anyway, we thought, oh, the healing cost is going to be in Zedona. And then um, I went, my dad passed away and I saw this ad for land in the San Luis Valley. And it, it was really cheap because we didn't have money. We've never, I mean, we've followed spirit all these years and we've always right. had just enough, but not extra, you know, even you know, doing the spiritual work. And um, so anyway, after that, when I'd meditate, it would say, go to San Luis, go to San Luis, go to San Luis. So we finally came up here and hated it. We go, we can't live 8,000 feet up in the air. We can't, we can't go live here. I mean, it's desert and tumbleweed and brush. And that kind of thing. <laughs> So we go spend the night in Taos. I wake up in the middle of the night and hear Mother Mary's voice. And she says, surrender to the land. And I couldn't even tell my husband until we got the gallop to say, this is what happened. He says, okay. And so we went back. We just bought a home together there in Cottonwood next to, and. Um, I know exactly where you are in Cottonwood. <clears throat> I spent five months in the Sedona area uh -huh. in Cottonwood this past season. Oh, so nice. I know exactly the area you're talking about and the energy that's there. <laughs> right. And so we had just bought the house. We'd owned it nine months. Nine months first time we bought a house together. We put it up in the market. Well, actually, when we got back, we told three of our friends, this is where the healing cost is supposed to be in the San, in San Luis Valley. And one of them wrote back, said, I'll buy the land for you because we didn't have the money. And anyway, so we came back up, found the piece. It was the first piece of property we looked at. I don't know if you've been here to this area. I um, have not, but I, I, I'm i supposed to. And it's very mystical. Finished, there's a yeah. yes. There's a, a a colleague, if I might, uh, named Maya Nartumid that's in the area. Do you know Maya? I do not. Is she up in Cresto? Um, uh, yes, she does, and we'll talk about her later. Okay. I really okay. want to focus on you, but she's in the area, and okay. she's there for the same purpose as you are. Anyway, okay, okay. So we um, put our house on the market. It was right around that before the bust in 20, 2008. And we bought the house for 160, uh, 142. We sold it for 209.9, which gave us a chunk of money to be able to move up here. And so then we came up here and we just sh started sharing with the po folks that we've helped heal what we were doing. And it's everything we've built. I don't know if you saw the overview of the garden and what we've yes. built so far. Um, was by private donation of people who understand the work um, that we're doing. And of course it's a message of divine love or love. And, um, and if I may share mother Mary's message to the world, which is my dearest child, you are the miracle you have been seeking. You are the heart you want to find. You are God's gift to the world. You have been created as divine. You are my heart. I am yours. There is nothing separating the two. You are my beloved child. My gift to you is you. So the message of the Casa is about helping people find their own divinity and to love themselves and heal uh, and, and find that within them in themselves, you know. So we, we built the garden out, which is a 300 a uh, foot diameter prayer meditation garden with two labyrinths, a medicine wheel and a stone circle. I don't know why 
I mean, we were told we were to have a Native American carve the totem pole carving of her, which, by the way, the day we installed it, a UFO showed up. And it was a little, it was a silver orb. I have a picture of that. I can forward that to you as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've just been on this. When mama says to do something, you do what mama says. And we've just been building this out and um, doing our work. We haven't had, it's, I mean, it's taken us a long time because we put the statue in 2008. And here it is, 24. Yeah. And we just now have the money to put an event center in. Which you saw the picture of with the clouds and the heart and that kind of thing. Yes. So then uh, it was, I think it was 2022 was when that vortex or portal opened. I don't know what it is because something came out of it. That bird, white bird came out of it. And I told you that. Do you want me to retell that story for the video or? Yes, please. That okay. way I see this as an archive for mm -hmm. if and when you're ready for others to hear. And yeah. so if you want them to be able to understand what we're discussing, we need to put it down here. And that way we can always refer them back to this. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So um, what happened was I was... There's a lot of work. Let me turn my phone off. I don't know why it's, uh, oh, it's the mayor calling, but she can wait. Um, so anyway, um, I was going out. I have to water all the grass and, you know, there's a lot of upkeep to the garden. And I went out about three o'clock in the afternoon. It was a Saturday afternoon. And this huge whirlwind started up about, I would say about 200 yards or 300 yards on the other side of the garden on the right-hand side. It was huge wasn't a dirt devil, wasn't going anywhere. It's in the same place. It was just whirling around and there was tumbleweeds flying and there was a big box and there was a piece of paper. And I'm thinking, oh, I've got to go find where that paper lands. So I was watching the piece of paper and the box so I could go get it. Uh, never thinking it was odd, but it, in the back of my mind, it's odd. I'm going, what's this whirlwind, you know? So as I'm watching the white piece of paper, it flips out wings and it's this white, I don't know if it was a white dove or that was my first thought. It was a white dove and it starts playing around. I mean, flying up and down in this. So you can't not watch it. And it comes out of the whirlwind, which I don't know how it did being a little white, lightweight bird out of this whirlwind, you know, heads toward Mother Mary's garden then heads north toward Mount Blanca, hits the property line and just goes like it goes into another dimension. So I'm standing there going, where'd it go? Where'd it go? You know, so I knew something magical had just happened, you know. Um, you know, I thought, well, okay, is it is this spirit saying it's really now you've done all this work, it's time for the cost? I really wasn't sure what the meaning was. But the cool thing is two weeks later on a Saturday, these four ladies show up at the garden because we don't really advertise it. We just, you know, cause it hadn't been finished, but whoever finds it, finds it. And uh, one of them does nothing but travels around and anchors portals. Yes. <clears throat> and out of the blue, never had anybody show up that like that before. And we've become really good friends. Her name is Christy Adams and she feels the energy. So she was like, <laughs> and then there's this palpable energy as you walk because we had built the event center by that time it wasn't finished um and that's where i sent you the picture where it looked like the angels coming in the building the energy was so strong it almost knock you out you would just get god bumps all over your body you know so it was just sort of like really cool to get that validation that we were in the right place doing the right thing. And especially with the picture of what looked like Mother Mary in the clouds blessing the, the building. Uh, but anyway, Christy came back the next year and as she was parking our RV and you know how you have to level it, we look up and there's this huge white bird again. And there's no white birds in the valley, but it was about the size of an eagle. It was huge. And it was circling around the building. And I kid you not, this bird stopped midair, stood up on its feet with its wings spread out and just hovered. And then, yeah. 
and this is about five times. It was just, it was, I'm getting goosebumps, God bumps, um, watching this thing, you know, and then finally it just sort of disappeared and I haven't seen it since, but those were um, sort of the recent events that have happened out there, which to me, I, I interpreted as, okay, now it's time for the CASA work, you know, um, for this work to really start now. But I don't have enough experience with Vortex's portals to know what I'm supposed <laughs> to do with this thing, you know? Here, Am I supposed I can to make <laughs> a circle on the ground and are people supposed to lay in it? And what am I supposed to do with this energetic space, you know? Here's what I can tell you at the outset. Mm -hmm. None of us knew about any of that when it first happened. Mm -hmm. All we knew is that we sensed some changes energetically in mm -hmm. the environment first. Not talking about sentient changes, just there's something in the atmosphere that's different here. Feels mm -hmm. lighter to me. And you have to get in tune with that first because mm -hmm. that's your touch feature here. Mm -hmm. That's how we... Um, sense vibration mm -hmm. once we get tagged into that oh then the whole multi-dimensional world just opens up so it sounds like you're along your journey you met your um beloved and your vibration was already pointed in this direction mm -hmm. curious about the esoteric and kind of following your heart and i totally relate to all of this because it's pattern the same way that I did. I didn't have any awareness of any of this. I felt as though uh, I had a decent level of intellect and mm -hmm. that I was open to things I had not experienced before. And that was really, that revelation was the breakthrough. Because as long as you don't pay attention to what you think you know right. and are open to extraordinary things, they will follow. <laughs> and once you get used to the first one, that unsettledness, then that's just, that's the gateway. They're spoon feeding us this higher intelligence awareness because we're at a level that we know something's going on, but we have to take it in bite-sized doses. And the first things I understood about understanding things energetically was that there was a part of our DNA that had to either be reactivated or triggered or whatever it was, nonetheless, and notwithstanding upgrades we've received along the way here as well, but until we could understand the vibrational nature of that communication we're getting from higher places, because they're not talking to us in English or right. Italian or any other damn language, they're talking to us vibrationally. So the first downloads we got were interpreters. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I can understand the download you keep sending me. So there's been a pattern of those that I don't need to tell you. We've been receiving downloads with information that, that we've been guided to follow. But if you've been following along closely, and I'm sure you have, you've noticed that recently it's been accelerating. Mm -hmm. I I can barely keep up with the downloads I've received. And it's just my nature to kind of understand it always takes me three days to kind of put together the new stuff that you're sending my way. I don't get three days anymore before more, more stuff's being sent this way. And for some reason, it happened now faster than it has before. I've been kind of on this journey for four years now. Telos was really the, the first anchor. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't realize until later it was a multidimensional experience. Until a year later, when I um, would meet a hybrid and she would introduce me to light beings and take pictures of this interaction, mm -hmm. then I could put into perspective what multidimensional experiences are. Because now mm -hmm. I got a couple of them and I can see them for what they are. Mm -hmm. I begin to now draw others around me that are having these experiences and didn't really know what to do with them because I didn't know what to do with them when they first happened, but that didn't stop them from coming on. And when the, the story first leaked out, and I probably sat with 
I don't know, hundreds of people doing Zoom sessions, some interviews, some just, you know, these kind of sessions. Um, I've made most of it public because I thought that's what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Supposed to show people what's happening in my world, in my little 3D world that's changing as an example. If you don't resonate with it, I'd send you love and light anyway. But right. that doesn't take away from the experiences I've had. And I'm not here to argue with anybody. If you don't get it, no problem. There are many that are. And those are the ones I'm here to support because there is a finite amount of 3D time remaining before Earth herself kicks into her new level of consciousness. This isn't about us all kumbaya together to help her get there. These are two different things going on. And our efforts are just to wake everybody else up. Just get your vibration right. You don't have to understand anything but that. Raise your vibration so you feel good every day. And by the time Earth gets to her spot, which is imminent soon, you'll be there. The work that you've been doing physically, I didn't have an appreciation for what I understood. You are working in an area that's known to be a golden tie allotment. And it's one of the anchors of these areas that are energetically predisposed to new Earth's vibration. You're there setting up camp, kid. You're the like the um, advanced team getting mm -hmm. things ready and getting the vibration right. That girl, Christy, that showed up was the one who you found the space. She came and sought for what it was, activated it. Mm -hmm. Now it's a hot spot. When you got there, it was a vortex. When she arrived, it became a portal. Mm -hmm. We don't know where it goes yet, but we know it goes places. And it's right. connected to many others. Right. My sense or feeling is, is that it will amplify or it amplifies if somebody is he needs something healed or moved through, it amplifies that to move it through really quickly. It um, would make sense to me. To... Yeah, so they're not, you know how it used to 20 years ago, we held on to stuff and we took layers and stuff to heal stuff. And now it's like you can move it through really quick, but it will also yeah. amplify what's unhealed. Yes. Yeah. Well. So it feels like it's sort of a positive and a negative, but I've been able to use it like to shift things in my own self, you know. Yes. Um, Everything's being raised to the surface. It's going to be dealt All with right. one way or the other because this effort, you talked about um, um, uh, the feminine energy coming to the rescue. I see it exactly for the same thing. Mm -hmm. If we went back to our, our first comprehension mm -hmm. of feminine, um, masculine, um, divine feminine and divine masculine energy, when those two met, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was divine feminine that received their inspiration from source, and it was divine masculine who carried it out. Mm -hmm. We're in an effort to get back to that balance again. And mm -hmm. so in our 3D worlds, we're clearing all the little karmic cords that we need to get rid of so we can achieve our own individual balance and contribute to everything else. So that's kind of how I feel things are getting played out. And it certainly lines up with everybody else's efforts. So I'm glad to hear from you. It's just another area where I have now heard some validation of, mm -hmm. first of all, space that was being cleared and ready. And then individuals, the people who were showing up at that vibrate, vibration mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you'll have to, when you come out here, you know, come out and visit, you know. I would love to do that. It's my intent to get out there, yes. The valley is very, very mystical. I mean, there's tons of things that have happened out here, good and scary. Do you know what I mean? So right. it certainly is some type of portal or... yes. Vortex you are, or... you're straddling dimensions in that yeah. area. It's clear yeah. to me. Yeah, you're be able you're able to reach into higher levels of intelligence and experience with one foot solidly here in 3D. But if you don't see that as the separation of these two timelines, yeah, one foot's going this way toward New Earth, and this one 
is the part of 3D that'll eventually entropy away. Right. Which right. vibratory level are you matching and which right. where are you going to go? Because mm -hmm. I see it splitting soon. Yeah. And that's really interesting because in my own journey, like, because we've been building out the sacred space. That's what we've been doing for the past 18 years is that we've been working on. It's just building out the sacred space. And I mean, there's been some really cool things that have happened out there. You know, like one of my friends, he went to start to walk the divine feminine labyrinth. And all of a sudden you're hearing hundreds of doves cooing, but there's no doves anywhere. Yes. You know, just validating um, so we've had some really, really cool things have to validate we're on the right space, doing the right thing. But since we've been building out the CASA, because, you know, we're not moneyed people and we've had to say, and we told Spirit, if you're going to do this, you got to bring the money. We can't, uh, we're not going right. to get debt for this, you know, we never have. So as we've gotten the mill, the, you know, we've added the prayer chapel and the ceremonial fire pit and the medicine wheel and, and that kind of thing. But anyway, um, Spirit ended up, and it was clearly from spirit to become the town manager here in this little town. And it really taught me that spirit is involved in everything, you know yes. what I mean? And I learned so much in, in spirit's presence, you know, like I was able to come into this little town, never wrote grants before, have won every grant, have brought about $3 million worth of grant funding into the town to build out the space because this is the anchor space where people would come to first before they came out to the property. Um, but now I'm really feeling that split is going to happen and I, it's time for me to let go of third dimensional world. Yes. Really put my focus on, hey, we've got the event space. We can cut, bring in speakers now. We can start doing the work. We can do retreats. Um, I teach an intuitive heart retreat to teach people how to listen to the wisdom of their heart and to, you know, find their inner divine self. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to focusing on that. But for this 18 years, it's been about building the sacred space. Bless your heart. You know, there's part of me that wishes I would have been triggered earlier in my life mm -hmm. because it would have had different impacts. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, when I hear stories like yours, like having to know this is imminent and having to live it for 18 years before it starts to play out, that's a lot to ask somebody in the mm -hmm. third dimensional world. Um, but we never know any of that. We no. didn't know any of it. Mm -mm. Thank God. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for volunteering for the work. Because if you have this level of awareness, you chose this incarnation. Mm -hmm. You knew you were coming back to assist through this process. So thank you for being one of them that showed up. Um, it's good to see other tribe. And that's why when people reach out this way, it's interesting for me to hear about their journey too. Because I mm -hmm. like to hear, you know, how they might they paralleled with mine. And then um, I always like to find out how in the world did you find me? So you know, the Ethereal Edge podcast girls. Mm -hmm. There's something that happened around that particular podcast that we would all like to understand better. Mm -hmm. I've done hundreds of these things at, at different levels, and I had not achieved one, and I didn't care about views or likes. It wasn't mm -hmm. about that. It was mm -hmm. about the right people that need to find this information will find it, mm -hmm. whether that's tens or hundreds or maybe a thousand. They're the right ones. And or the one in the middle of the night at three o'clock in the morning where I've never <laughs> even known about their podcast and it shows up on my feed. You'll be delighted to hear this information then because there's one other person I had an earlier Zoom session with today. Mm -hmm. Her name is Wynn Farrar. And, you know, you hang around the tribe long enough, you'll all interact one with one another too. She said the same thing that a few nights ago in the middle of the night, because she, when she does, gets up in the middle of the night, she'll go to YouTube and she'll find something. Boom, mine showed up for her too. Mm -hmm. So anyway, my point is they don't have anything that has generated the volume of views that this first interview did. Mm -hmm. I was shocked when it went over 100,000 views. And as of two days ago, it was over 150,000 views. Wow. How and why? 
because mm -hmm. nothing else on their platform is even close to that. Mm -hmm. I would just like to understand what was the phenomenon that drew everybody here? Because the comments that we've received, and I've never been in a one of these where we had almost a thousand comments and only a handful of them were not on the same vibration level. Right, oh, right. everybody that heard and made a comment, they were glad to hear it, delighted somebody else showed up, having the same feelings, didn't know who else to call on. Holy cow, there's some other phenomenon that's taken root here that just indicates to me that the shift is even more imminent because here's a whole new crowd of you that showed up that I, you'd never heard of me before and you showed up in droves this time. The same thing happened after the first of the year. There was an, a, a slight uptick and people who hadn't heard about me and all showed up. Here we go again. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, um, now that I'm working on leaving this uh, 3D world job, which has taught me so much, um, but I know it's time I'm transitioning out here. Um I want to start like a um, kind of a, I, I don't know what it's going to be called. I was thinking about calling it Ordinary People, Extraordinary Lives. And if you're interested, I'd love to do um, a Zoom session with you. And Happy to help. Because I think your story needs to get out more. And our people yeah. who have followed us, I think, would really, really enjoy it. Yes. Um, and really Happy to do that. To you okay. just... Tell me when okay. I, I'm in the same camp you are. Wow. Although <laughs> when these things first happen and when Telos really kind of sunk in a couple months after it, that was my conclusion. Mm -hmm. It happened to you, Lowell, because you're going to be willing to talk to people about it. Mm -hmm. I think it made sense that I got into the hospitality industry, first of all, mm -hmm. that I lived in nine different states and I left my mark behind with millions of people I came in touch with, right? I think I had the same impact that when they interacted with me, I think I left the guy's authentic, he's genuine, and I care about others, and it comes across. Mm -hmm. Well, now, there's a message I got to deliver to all of you. Mm -hmm. And it's not anything that you have probably any experience with. But I think they chose me to have this experience first so I could interpret it properly to you so that you would take it seriously when I started to tell you this stuff is real. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I believe it. I mean, I, I, I totally believed it. And, yeah. you know, I've always been drawn to Mount Shasta anyway. Um, but currently where we are in my journey, my husband is 92. So he's 24 years older than me. So I'm sort of. Mother Mary put me stuck here. Do you know what I mean? That I can't travel or go do those things, but that's okay. Maybe that's what I thought. Maybe that portal or that whirlwind was from inner earth. And I don't know. <clears throat> I can you know? tell you that wherever there's an energetic vortex of any type, mm -hmm. <laughs> you get to choose where you want to go. It's absolutely connected inner earth. That's an area that I didn't even, I wasn't aware of, but we have certainly forgotten. Mm -hmm. It's been here underneath us much longer than we've been here. And we're about to just re-engage with that. Then let's set that aside for a moment because mm -hmm. there's certainly beyond earth sentient traffic and contact that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. Friends I've gotten to know over the last few years that have been not abducted. They went and had experiences and came back with knowledge they did not have before. Or, yeah. And so you can't discount any of that anymore. We've been guided to understand that this contact is going to increase. Mm -hmm. In my mind, it's got to increase with people who vibrate at that level. If you're right. ready, I'm telling you, and you want to have this experience, just ask for it. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, how can I help you in any way? You, <laughs> when you reached out, that was help enough. Every time I get the opportunity to exchange like this, it's mm -hmm. just more validation mm -hmm. and hearing people's position on what they've been doing. Mm -hmm. My focus 
seems to be on understanding the energetic part of all of this. I'm curious about the grid work reestablishing itself and everyone connecting to that. Uh, it's my understanding that the original design on the planet were there were 12 strategically placed crystal pyramids that were all energy generators and by virtue of their position connected the earth to everything else well those things are all coming back into alignment right now mm -hmm. part of what's going on with um, all of the seismic activity that's going on yeah it, there's your proof that it's my understanding when earth slips into her next phase of consciousness it's coming associated with some type of a solar phenomenon mm -hmm. it made me start to watch the sun's activity two years ago and what i've seen over the last two years and what i've learned and what sunspot maximum means mm -hmm. we're in it <laughs> and the latest activity even the slightest brush we're getting is causing geomagnetic storms that we don't understand the how um, strong they are. Right. And we're, we've got another year of this in front of us. Right. You can't tell me that one of these isn't going to trigger where we're going next. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, I don't want to put a, a dot on the timeline, but the first place I learned about golden tie allotment information was from some documentation I had found um, searching for information on Toth. Mm -hmm. This was from a channeling that this woman, Maya, I was telling you about, because she's been channeling Toth since the 70s, mm -hmm. and recorded an archive of this stuff like from the 90s. Well, mm -hmm. I stumbled over this document that uh, clearly I was supposed to find. And it talked about this transition and what was actually going to take place when Earth went from um, Earth World 1 to Earth World 2. And the process in between is called Light Principle 40. Toth described the process and the window of time, he said, in the freaking first paragraph was sometime between the years 2015 and 2025. Mm -hmm. Now, he also went on to say later the timeline shift but I know that that means it can be later, absolutely, but it can be earlier just as easy. Absolutely. And there are days that energetically I feel this is the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I And what I just picked up is I think it's it's already here. It's waiting for yes. us to shift into it, to see Correct. it. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. That it's already because I can see some of the overlays of it now. I mean, experience some of the overlays of it now. And that, that excellent, good. I'm glad you see that. Somebody had to keep explaining these things in 3D terms. And until we really understand it, we can hear the words all we want. But right, I right. didn't understand when people were saying we're living through um, dual timelines until mm -hmm. recently. Now it makes perfect sense to me. Mm -hmm. Those timelines are absolutely separating in the same way that when I understood, I tried to understand, okay, what's the physical phenomenon between Earth going to her next stage? And in my mind, it had been kind of settled that it was like the, the sphere is going through a membrane. And on the other side of the membrane is all higher vibration, higher frequencies that's unattainable by the lower frequencies below. And once mm -hmm. Earth reaches a place where she's 51% of the way through, she's through. Right. Anything right. that was 3D entropies away. It was better described to me more recently by somebody who did a wonderful video about it. And she suggested this is more like a, a cell going through mitosis. That's how I see it, to where it's here is 3D, here's 5D, and you choose the path you want. Right. It's going to be based on your vibration. And you can't fake it. Right. So you want this? Now is the time to start to work on your vibration. If you don't care and you got 3D lessons to play out, bless your hearts. It's not the path I'm choosing. Right, right. And I think that's why the the Casa de Santa Maria work is so important so that we can help those people that don't understand what's happening and the process that they're going through to help them. We've got to move into our heart. It's all yes. about heart 
you know, the spiritual journey yeah. is just what from here to here. And yes. once we start following this and finding that love, because it's love that heals and it's love that creates miracles. But if you can't love yourself, we've got to move those blocks out of the way so that you yeah. can see your own divinity. Susan, it's um, there's a part of this. I've heard people say these words before and mm -hmm. they're lovely to hear. Mm -hmm. until they sink in and how do they sink in they were just lovely words mm -hmm. you however have some space that people feel the energy mm -hmm. there's the interpreter i can't sell you on things i'm going to tell you and really we want you to get to the point where you're starting to connect to this and feel it yourself mm -hmm. your space you that's what it. it does so yes. you just have to get people that are open Mm -hmm. and vibrate at that level already anybody that's locked into something else they're not going to spend much time in the space because they're just not going to vibrate with it and no. actually they're going to want to be somewhere else right but those that show up oh they were looking for this frequency and mm -hmm. that's when they can finally tune into it and then all those words about what that felt like us when we finally sunk in and connected with our yourself yeah it's going to take place on your air uh, on your property and that's what it was meant to do so as the um um proprietor bless your heart for the work that you put in it's going to bear fruit and you're going to get to meet really cool people i can't wait i'm, yeah. I'm ready i i mean i just know i think i really think that the whirlwind the the white bird, the dove, whatever it was, was like, oh, okay, now it's time. You've been yes. spending all this time building it. Now it's time for the work to really begin. It was yeah. meant for this time. Um, even though we thought it would have been a long time ago that we would have, you know, it would have started. It was meant for this time. Um, and I understand that now, but I really feel it was like, okay, you're ready to go here. Let me give you this little nugget mm -hmm. of this whirlwind and this bird and this dimensional, you know, yeah. and I don't know whether it's, I think it's that there's some like a dome over the Casa property. We have about 38 acres or if it's because it popped through a dimension, that bird went th right through. You could see that. Absolutely right. You, you know. described exactly the way I would describe it to you. People mm -hmm. could understand the levels of dimensionality. Mm -hmm. And there are other physical levels that mm -hmm. aren't available for everyone else to see. However, yeah. you do. Yes. In that area, you are, first of all, the area is already conducive to those higher vibrations. You feel it, and so do others. It's mm -hmm. been that way for a while. That's its reputation. Now... People that have moved into the area also have vibrations that match what's going on. True. So until you all showed up, no one was there to drive the boat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Right. Cool. And they have, and the, you know, the spiritual people have shown up in the yes. past couple of years and all of a sudden they're there, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And one gal that moved up to the Mesa here and she works for the spirit network. Um, I think it's called Spirit Network or something like that. But anyway, um, it's just been really, really cool. So anyway, and this sort of validates to me that that my understanding is right. It's really time to put my focus there. Yes. This was just the holding place. Working here was a holding place where I did great things for the town. But now it's time to let go of this because it's a third dimensional construct and move into the work. Yeah. Um, you know, and now I can more now that I'm going to go collect social security and hope it's still here for years. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, I'm ready for that. So. Here's my opinion about that. I don't think that they could totally dismantle it for, no. let's say four years. Let's say that that might be true. You already heard my timeline and when I think we're not going to have to rely on any of this anymore. And the next level <laughs> where we're going and what we get to do we don't work for a living <laughs> yeah all of that's off the table so i'm not going to go on that diatribe right now all i can tell you is you don't have to worry about the things we worry about in the third right. dimension right we right. all know we're connected to one another and we are there for each other we don't worry about how we're going to feed ourselves 
because first of all, your whole form is going to be different. Mm -hmm. You'll eat because you like to, but not because your physicality depends on it. You right. are no longer a carbon form. You get to turn your light form into a, the avatar of your choice and we'll see how that goes i'm really curious about that part because there's still physicality to all of us then right. too right and i'm under the instant understanding that the lumerians raise their own families as well mm -hmm. so there's many things to look forward to not having to learn duality lessons anymore right right yeah well, cool. I'm I'm looking forward to getting the copy of this so I can let my hubby see it. Yes. He needs to have his little earphones on because it doesn't hear well, but he's a great being in himself. Perfect. Um, I definitely know we've been in past lives together. Um, and I almost feel like this is a completion of a work that didn't get finished. Like back in the Egyptian times, I feel like it was a lifetime that we started and working with the temples in back in the gym and we came together we've known each other for forever I, you know when i met him i said i know you you know but we came back to hold space to finish what was torn down or didn't get completed in that lifetime there could yes. have been other lifetimes but that's what my understanding is this is mm -hmm. this is many years of work that now is conducive to create energetically what we tried to do in past lives yes oh yeah you've got skills that are unlocking that oh i've done this before uh you know in our 3d life we didn't know any of that until the time came when our awareness of oh yeah i've, I've done this before mm -hmm. that's why you were chosen that's mm -hmm. well that's why you volunteered because well, that I'm was first mm -hmm. little star seed there were a lot of us that answered the call here because earth needed some love and mm -hmm. that's what we came to do first. When humanity kind of demonstrated what we could do back in the 30s and 40s, when we were given the gift of atomic power, we mm -hmm. weaponized it. Mm -hmm. And then we dropped it on the planet and showed them what we could do. That did not go well for us. So right. there's where, in my mind, when this idea that humanity was hands off because they're evolving on their own. That's when they finally stepped in. Because when we demonstrated what we would do with a cosmic asset, when we mm -hmm. didn't care for it that much, yeah, they weren't going to let that happen again. And there's been all kinds of evidence since then that proves me right that, yes, they're watching out for us. That still didn't prevent them from when they did want to step in, this mm -hmm. higher intelligence help that's been trying to influence us they still can't influence us in our physicality, mm -hmm. but we can. And that's why we chose to incarnate here, wake up along the way, just in time for the shift to happen. We yeah. all knew what was coming and not everybody, not every soul is allowed to come here to earth. First of right. all, let's just set that straight. So thank you for the work that you put in. I'm glad that you're here and you made the team. But yeah, there's a little bit more work to do because wow, we're not done yet. We've been in some kind of illusion that we didn't really understand what we were doing here. Yes, Earth's been an experiment the whole time in humanity. And we've been dicked with along the way. We're mm -hmm. about to get to a place where humanity's DNA has been restored back to her original design. Mm -hmm. And now watch what we can do when right. our predecessors share their technologies. Watch what humanity can do. Mm -hmm. They've kind of grown past the part that makes higher dimensional beings creative. And I don't want to take anything away from that. I'm probably speaking in 3D terms. However, what makes humans so precious is that we want to make things better. Mm -hmm. And it's our emotions that does that. So imagine taking that kind of drive with their kind of technology, watch what humanity is going to do next. Right, right. And I think as a whole, you know, humanity, if we raise our vibration, watch what can manifest next. Right. Oh, we're all co-creators. And at the next yeah. level, holy cow, we've never been in this position before. Humans have not been undisturbed on pristine earth and show us what you're going to make out of it. 
We already have this idea of new earth and right. it's just a matter of us making this transition, but the clock is ticking and right. it's going to happen sooner than later. Right. I agree. All right. Well, very cool. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really thank you. you. This was great. I, again, I just, it's dear to me the time I get to speak with others who get it. So thank you mm -hmm. tribe. And, um, I'm going to post this on my YouTube channel first unlisted, but if you want me to send you the file, I'll do that as well. Yeah. If you would, you. I, I can put it up on my website or no, I can just sure. link the YouTube to my, you can absolutely. Yes. To my web website as well. And if you put it up on website and, and you you can show it to anybody. I don't, if you want to, then I'll make it public. That's fine. Make there are public, pieces of these. Uh, that's great to hear. I yeah. always believe that when experiencers come forward, mm -hmm. the rest of us need to hear those things. Yes. Those just help us validate our own feelings yeah. when we hear somebody else. doesn't have to be my journey because right. in truth, it's not. But holy cow, something pulled us together and we all sense the same things going on. That's what's dear to me. Right. So thanks. Right. Well, thank you and know you're loved. Thank you. All right. We'll All stop right. here and we'll pick up again in the future. Sounds good. Take care. Take care. Uh-huh.